claim the boot. So now once we go and we claim this, press E, boom, we have the booth claimed. And as you can see, there's a picture of us and it says Recurs Booth. So yeah. Now All right, guys. Welcome back to a new Roblox Studio tutorial. So today we're going to be making a booth system tutorial. I told you guys on Discord and you guys kind of wanted it. So it's going to be a pretty fun tutorial. There's probably going to be two parts uh, for this. Uh, right now, we're going to cover the basics. So claiming a booth. So right now, for a booth game, right? Now, booth games, if you played any booth games, right? You played like Rate My Avatar, uh, Booth Plaza, Please Donate. Those are all games that have booths. And we're going to make a booth system similar to those. Uh, similar to the ones in those games. So now let's actually make a booth. So I'm not really good at building, but we can make a very simple booth. Um, so let's make this a normal gray color. Um, it's probably good. Maybe too big, but it's good enough. Make sure it's anchored. Um, don't forget to anchor this. And then let's actually let's just make it Okay, let's just make the parts first. Then we can add the screen UIs and everything else later on. Uh, this is good enough. Uh, uh yeah, I don't know. That's good enough. We got darker color, and then here we can just. Make the sign on the top. It's not the best, but something. Okay, that's good enough. Make it like this, or we can just cover the top like that. I don't know. Looks good. Looks good. Very basic, but I can do the job. So let's actually group this. Call this booth. Now we can add the surface GUIs for the bottom part. It's going to say like players booth, right? So let's call this bottom part. Insert a surface GUI. And a text label. Um, let's actually make this face the proper direction of this front. Let's face it back. Let's rename the text label to uh, Player name. Let's resize to one zero one zero. Okay. Background transparency equals false. Let's make the text color white. Let's make it. What should we do? Let's do Gotham and make text scaled and then by default i should say like unclean booth right hmm. i feel like i made this all right this works so now let's copy and paste this surface ui and then we're gonna have something on top right what i'm thinking is we should put an image right next to this and or right, not, right next to the text right there's a text here and an image right next to the text so Gonna call this top sign, the sign on top, and then we're gonna have we're gonna have to paste this, and then what we're gonna do next is you're gonna change the pixels per stud, but ah, uh, that's not really needed. Um, so for the player, and let's call this text, and then let's instead of let's make it a bit shorter on the horizontal side. So let's make this point seven. And then let's make the anchor point one and change the position to one zero 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 just on the X axis scaled. And then we have enough space to put the image where the player can. Well, it's going to by default when a player claims it, we're going to change it to the player's avatar, um, a picture of the player's avatar, and then the player can change it afterwards. All right, so let's now put the image label. Let's make the background transparency to one. 
let's say, change the size to 0.3, 0, and 1, 0. 0.3, 0, 1, 0. All right, perfect. Look at this. So beautiful. Now, we can get, uh, get to the scripting part. Um, if we don't need anything else to build, um, of course, you can make it however you want. Um, you can add some details here and there. This is a very simple booth. You know, I'm not a builder, so well, that's that. So now, uh, what we need now is a proximity prompt. So let's actually add a part for the proximity prompt. So let's just make a small part here. Like this. Uh, trans, so can collide and transparent. Okay, so let's call this prompt and then let's add a proximity prompt. All right, let's make the whole duration one. The keyboard key code is E. Uh, da, 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 da. where is this object text? The object text will be booth, and by default, it will be clean because it's going to be unclaimed by default. So, action text is claim. Let's claim, right? And what we want to do is we're gonna, um, we're gonna make it so when a player claims it, we're gonna dis disable this prompt, right? So, no one else can claim it. But we're only going to enable it for the player so the player can keep on editing it, right? So they can use the same proximity prompt to edit the booth, but no one else is going to see it. The only person that will see it after the player claims the booth is a player that claimed it, right? So now let's add a script. This will be the claim script and the edit script, right? So it's going to be for the proximity prompt. So let's make some variables local booth model. Or actually, let's make a proximity so proximity prompt. We'll script up here. Local booth model is the main booth model equals prox dot parent dot parent local top sign equals booth model dot top sign and local bottom bottom part equals booth model the bottom part all right that's it so now what we want to do is actually before anything we want to make a value inside the player an object value right and this value will store the booth that player claims so if a player claims this booth right we're going to store this booth inside the object value that player has and that's how we can actually know if the player has a booth that he claimed and what booth the player claimed. So we're gonna to go to service script service, make a script. Let's call this, let's call it whatever. Ah, it doesn't matter. So this is a script in service script service. So uh, game that players, the player added, connect function. Then we add the player right here. This is a pla uh, parameter. Let's add the value, so local. Plus the booth value equal instance dot new. It's an object value, so let's make a new object value. Booth value dot name equals claim booth. Now by default, since the player will join without a claim booth, it will be nil. So we don't actually have to do anything. It's going to be nil by default. So booth value dot parent equals player. All right, pretty easy, pretty pretty easy, right? That's all we need. So now we can actually get with the proximity prompt. So prox dot triggered. So when the proximity prompt is triggered, connect function. Okay, and the player is the player that triggered the proximity prompt. And uh, in case you don't know what proximity prompt is, let me just play real quick. And I'll also show you the object value while we're at it. So as you can see, this is our object value and it shows in this value, it will uh, be set to the booth that we claim. And as you can see, we didn't do it right now, but as you can see, this is the proximity prompt and we can actually get scripted, uh, get scripted. We can get this scripted. So 
the proximity prompt is triggered, you have to check the object value that the player has. We want to check the booth the player, or we want to check if the player has cleaned the booth, right? First of all, and if the player doesn't have a booth claimed, we have to check. Okay, um, actually, we don't have to check. So if the booth, if the player doesn't have a booth that he claimed, we can then uh make the player claim the booth, right? And yeah, that's it. So basically, so local claim booth equals player dot claimed booth and that value or okay so if claimed booth that value equal nil meaning the player doesn't have a booth that that he claimed or he or she um then what we can do now is we can make the player hmm, we can make the player hold a minute hmm, okay so once the player claims a booth the proximity prompt will be disabled on the server right so no one else can claim the booth or no one can claim a booth that's already claimed right so that could work um okay that could work actually so we can then do prox dot enabled equals false so no one else can mess with the proximity prompt or claim the booth that's already claimed then we can set the sign or the bottom part the bottom part dot surface gui dot player name it's not really the player name i guess i guess you can say this is the booth name um so the booth name will be like player's name right so we can do okay player name dot text equals player dot name dot dot booth so it's going to be for example recurs booth so once this is uh, claimed, we'll set this text. We'll also set the image. So top sign dot surf UI dot uh, image label dot image equals game dot players get user thumbnail as sync. This gets the thumbnail from a player's user ID. So in this case, it's player dot user ID, and then the thumbnail type, the thumbnail type that avatar or going to be headshot. It's the shot of the head. So basically a picture of the avatar's head and enum the thumbnail size, size 420 by 420. That's the size of the image. Pretty simple, right? This just gets a thumbnail of the player's avatar. Um, what else? Now, actually, I think that should be it. All right. So now we do need remote events. So the reason why we need remote events is once the player claims it, the proximity prompt will be disabled, right? Uh, for everyone, but we only want it to be enabled for the player that claimed it, right? So the player can actually edit and, you know, modify like the text out right here. So we're going to make two uh, remote events. So I already made them, but like, let's say you don't have these, right? Um, Press the plus button and add a remote event. So one of them is going to be called claim booth. So that's the first remote event that's fired when a player claims a booth. And we're going to make a remote event called um, edit booth. Yeah. So this is when the player wants to edit the booth after he claimed the booth. So let's actually, oops, wrong script. So let's make them, make the variables for them. So local. We'll Claim booth remote equal game dot replay storage. Okay, that claim booth. So in local edit booth remote. Ah, okay. Game dot replay storage dot edit booth. Okay. So what the first time the player claims the booth, right? We're gonna fire claim booth remote. So claim booth remote, we're gonna fire it to the client and we're gonna fire it to the player's client, right? The player's screen. And let's also pass the booth model so we can enable the proximity prompt for that player that claimed it. So now let's go to starter GUI. Uh, okay, starter GUI, local script. Let's call this booth. Okay, so local claim booth remote equal game that revenue storage that wait for a child claim booth 
You can also make uh well right now let's keep this. So claim booth remote dot on server or sorry no dot on client event connect function. So once we fire this remote from the server, so from right here, once we fire it, it's gonna appear here. And then what we're gonna do is gonna enable the proximity prompt. So in this parameter is gonna be booth model. That's it. And so we're gonna do booth model. So this is the model right here. And then we're gonna to go to the prompt. So right prompt and proximity prompt. So booth model dot prompt dot proximity prompt right here. And we're gonna enable this. So enable enabled was true. Right. And then we're gonna also change the accent uh, action text. Um, so instead of claim, it's gonna be edit. Right. So actually what we could do is make a variable so local prox equals just so it's easier for us. Prox, okay. And prox the action text. Okay. I'm on a roll right now. I keep on misspelling words. All right. And then we're going to change this to edit. That's it. Now we're gonna make another remote event for edit, but I might be making that for the part two. Um, yeah, for editing the booth, that remote event, we're gonna make a GUI. I'm not sure if I can fit it in this tutorial. Um, we'll see, first of all, if this works. So right now, let's actually, um, oh, and one more thing I forgot. Apparently I forgot. Um, so claim booth is the value right here. Obviously we need to set it. So claim booth, that value, equals booth. I can't believe I forgot that, but that's the most important part. So claim booth that value equals booth model. Um, so we're going to set the player's object value, the claim booth object value to the booth that he claimed, right? So we can know the, the player has a booth claimed. All right, so let's play. Let us play. Let us play. So play right now, as you can see in recur, claim booth, we don't have a claim the booth. So now once we go and we claim this, press E, boom, we have the booth claimed. And as you can see, there's a picture of us and it says recurs booth. So yeah, now it says edit because we already claimed the booth. Um, it doesn't do anything because we didn't fire the remote event. We didn't do anything for the edit. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So yeah, that's pretty much it. What we're gonna do is make a GUI. So next tutorial, we're gonna make a GUI and we're gonna make it so we can change the text on the top side and also change the image. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want more, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, 10 likes for part two. And yeah, see you guys in the next one.